article. I'll read this tweet off to you word for word. Rumor is that Jeremy Banks, which is a defensive player for Tennessee, got suspended because he tried to fight Hooker in the locker room over something to do with the NIL. Milton, which is the backup quarterback, stepped in and stopped it and Heifel suspended Banks over it. I think this Tennessee football program is literally falling apart. Mwah, ha, 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 ha. Little warning and disclaimer. If you're a Tennessee fan, you might want to click off. Yeah, yeah, let's just say you're not going to like this one. Ha, 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 ha. I cannot lie to you, though. I'm excited to make this video. Tennessee, I want y'all to really think about this. Within the span of three weeks, they went from being the best team in the country, the number one team in the country, to mediocre. <laughs> I'm sorry, I gotta say it. They went from the rocky top to the rocky bottom. And you wanna know the funniest part about this? If you're a Tennessee football fan or you keep up with this program, you shouldn't be shocked. This is the most Tennessee thing ever. I can't explain it if you know you know. I wish I could say I feel sorry for Tennessee fans, but I don't because a large population of them, they're some of the cockiest and most arrogant and obnoxious people to ever walk this earth. You would think a fan base that has watched a team suck for the past 15 years would be humble yet they aren't. Blows my mind, and let me make this clear, I'm not talking about all the Tennessee fans, y'all know exactly which ones I'm referring to. I grew up in a city that is actually located, one half of it's in Alabama and the other half is in Tennessee, so I know a lot of Tennessee fans, they're good people. And even till this day, when I run into Tennessee fans, and heck, some of my neighbors are Tennessee fans, they're awesome people, I have no problem with them. But, and I have a big but, those are the rare exceptions. The sad reality is, a lot of your other Tennessee fans, they ruin it for everybody else. It's unfortunate, and it's not just Tennessee fans. Every college football fan base has people like this. It's just more enhanced because Tennessee fans are a little worse than others. Anyways, getting back on track, we got to talk about this Tennessee football program and how they are literally, and I mean literally, falling apart. No, I'm not just referring to that embarrassing and massive loss to South Carolina. There's more stuff going on behind the scenes. There's a lot of rumors going on, and it does not look good. We're going to talk all about that, and also the new top 10, well, at least according to me. Let me know your thoughts down below. And we got to talk about the worst team in the SEC. I tweeted out earlier today, let me know who you think is the worst team in the SEC. And I think it's a great conversation because, by the way, I don't think we can say it's Vanderbilt anymore because they won two straight games. We got a lot to talk about. This intro was already way too long. All right, Matt, blah, blah, blah. Shut the crap up. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, first things first, let's go over my top 10 real quick because I want to get into this Tennessee drama. Starting at number one, going to 10, I got Georgia, the Ohio State, TCU at three, talk about that in a second, USC at four, Michigan at five, also, I know that may be controversial, LSU at six, Bama at seven, Clemson at eight, Oregon at nine, and Penn State at 10. I considered putting Tennessee right behind Bama because I thought the Tennessee team, even though they lost to South Carolina, they are probably better in Clemson, but then the news came out about Hendon Hooker. He's out for the year towards ACL. So I think without Hendon Hooker, Tennessee's not a top 10 team. So that's why I don't have them in the top 10. Outside of that, I don't think any of you are going to argue with Georgia and Ohio State. But here's where it gets interesting. TCU at 3 and USC at 4. And I have Michigan at 5. My reason for that is because I actually made a video earlier today talking about TCU they're winners. I like everything about them. And if Oklahoma and Texas had the same resume as TCU, oh, heck, y'all would be clamoring about, hey, they should be the number one team in the country. You can say what you want about TCU. All I know is they win, and your boy Matt likes winners. They win all these close games. They're battle-tested. And may I remind you, they're down a lot of starters. Behind TCU, I got USC at number four, and the only reason for that is because I love Lincoln Riley and Caleb Williams. USC arguably has the worst defense out of any team on this top ten list but their offense it's as good as anybody else and for me i got kayla williams at number one in my husband race this dude is the best player in the country at least this year it's unfortunate that he plays on the west coast and usc don't kick off most of their games till 10 p.m and they end at 1 a.m but this dude is special. I could probably sit up here and talk about Kayla Williams and how much I love everything about his game for 10 minutes. I'm going to leave it at that. And here's what I need to address, because I had a lot of people on Twitter saying, yo, Matt, how is Michigan at five? What's going on? Why do you say that? Here's my reason for that. Number one, yeah, Michigan hasn't exactly played the greatest competition, but I'm not holding that against them. Because if you want to be honest here, Michigan and Ohio State, they've played the same competition. And I have Ohio State at number two. The reason why I have Michigan at five and Ohio State at two is because I don't trust and I don't believe that J.J. McCarthy can win you a game if you need him to. Take nothing away from the kid. I think he will be special, but that's the problem. I said he will 
will be. This current year, he's not special. At best, J.J. McCarthy is a game manager. He misses way too many throws. He's just not a great quarterback. And the bottom line is, it's the same thing with the NFL in college. If it's kind of 50-50, I think Ohio State and TCU, you know, they're 1A, 1B. I'm giving the nod to the team with the better quarterback. Long story short, that's why I got Michigan at five. I think USC's got a better quarterback and TCU's got a better quarterback. If TCU and Michigan play tomorrow, I'm picking TCU. If USC and Michigan play tomorrow, I'm picking USC. That's why I got Michigan at number five. And the only reason I got Ohio State at number two is because they're beyond talented at the quarterback position and wide receivers. And going down a list here, nothing really to talk about. No one's going to argue with LSU, Bama, Clemson, Oregon, and Penn State. I'm very curious about that. I want to know your your guys' opinion. If USC and Michigan play tomorrow night, who are you picking? If your answer to that is not Michigan, then Michigan should be ranked in the top four, at least in my humble opinion. Next up, before we get into this Tennessee drama, I asked you guys today because I was sitting around thinking about it. Man, since Vanderbilt, I guess, you know, they're kind of on a hot streak and win streak, who is the new worst team in the SEC? There's a legit argument. You can't just say, oh yeah, it's Vanderbilt, no doubt. And a lot of you guys on Twitter was saying Texas A&M. Texas A&M was the overwhelming favorite and I saw a lot of Missouris here and there. Oh yeah, I also saw a couple of Floridas and that one does intrigue me because hey, maybe Florida is the new worst team. I'm gonna show you guys the standings. In the SEC East, Florida, they're three and five, Missouri's two and five, and Vanderbilt's two and five as well. But in the SEC West, you see Auburn, they're two and five and they're five and six in the win-loss column. But a and is one in six in the conference, which is the worst. Texas A&M has four wins this year and Vanderbilt has five. If I would have told you that at the beginning of the season, what would you have thought? Man, I am extremely curious about that as well, I guess. And I thought about it, if Vanderbilt and Texas A&M play tomorrow, I'm probably picking Vanderbilt. I can't believe those words came out of my mouth, but they're on a two-game win streak, and A&M, they're just pitiful. Man, A&M's not just the worst team in the SEC West. They're arguably the worst team in the SEC in general. Like I said, drop those comments down below on that topic. But finally, the main topic, the main encore, the main reason you clicked onto this video, we gotta talk about Tennessee. You could say I'm gassing this up, but I don't really think I am, and I'll explain why. I think this Tennessee football program is literally falling apart. Or maybe not the program, that was a bad way to word it, but at least this team is falling apart. Trust me, I get it. I know how absurd that sounds because they're sitting at 9-2, and two, but just wait until you hear what's going on behind the scenes. First things first, reason number one as to why they're literally falling apart is because their quarterback is out for the season. That's just domino number one. Hendon Hooker, who was my dark horse to win the Heisman at the beginning of the year, losing him is going to hurt you. It now makes the Vanderbilt game a little more intriguing because Vanderbilt's hot in Tennessee. They're at an all-time low. Their backup quarterback, Joe Milton, who formerly played at Michigan, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I'm 99.9% .9 he played at Michigan. Yeah, he's got talent and he's got a heck of an arm. He can throw the football like 80 yards, but he's not accurate. Let me put it this way. There's a reason he's not the starting quarterback. Does he have talent? Yes. But is he as good as Hendon Hooker? Heck to the no. Reason number two as to why the Tennessee Volunteers football team is falling apart you gave up 63 to South Carolina, and I think that speaks for itself. I've already talked about this. Do you know how embarrassing it is to give up 63 to South Carolina, a.k.a. not just one of the worst offensive teams in the SEC, but one of the worst offensive teams in the country? This is the same South Carolina team that scored six points last week against Florida. Also, your boy Rattler heading into the Tennessee game had eight touchdowns to nine interceptions, and in the Tennessee game alone, he had six touchdowns. He almost had more touchdowns in one game than the entire season. Think about that. Give all the credit in the world to Rattler. I've already done that, but it should also be an indication of just how terrible this defense is. I'm not going to rant and rave on how bad the defense was. There's no excuse for it, and you guys saw it live. It was enough misery itself. You don't need me to sit up here and ridicule the defense. They did that for themselves, and I can't emphasize that enough. Reason number three as to why this Tennessee team is falling apart. Apparently, there was rumors going on that one of the defensive players and Hendon Hooker, they got into it in the locker room. Let me clarify, these are rumors. This is not coming from me. This is coming from Tennessee fans and people around the locker room and whatnot. I'm just the messenger, so if you don't think this is true, don't be mad at me. I'll read this tweet off to you word for word. Rumor is that Jeremy Banks, which is a defensive player for Tennessee, got suspended because he tried to fight Hooker in the locker room over something to do with the NIL. Milton, which is the backup quarterback, stepped in and stopped it and Heifel suspended Banks over it. The defense didn't agree with it, so the team was divided playing last night against South Carolina. 
thoughts. I think that's interesting. To get some more details on it, this was also said that Jeremy Banks, he stepped on the power T, and the rules in the locker room is that if you step on the power T, you have to do push-ups. Jeremy Banks stepped on the T during the week, and he didn't do his push-ups. Hendon Hooker apparently pressed him about it. He proceeded to try and fight Hendon, and then, yeah, Joe Milton, that's when he stepped in or whatnot. Continuing along here, I know it's hard to read, but this tweet was deleted. Joe Milton had to break them up, and he ended up holding Banks against the wall. This comes from very close sources to the football programs. This explains why our defense didn't come to play tonight, and honestly, that scares me. It sounds like Hypo's locker room is divided. Like I said, these are rumors. Do what you want with that information. Here's all I'm going to say about it. Something had to happen. I mean, you don't just wake up and give up 63 points to South Carolina. And even with Alabama giving up 52 to Tennessee, it's not acceptable for the Alabama standard, but you can understand it because the Tennessee offense, they're unreal this year. They're amazing. But what's hard to fathom and try to make sense out of is how South Carolina puts up 63 on your noggin when they're terrible at offense. You almost have to feel like and kind of believe, hey, Maybe something was going on in the locker room with the players. Maybe they were divided. If I had to take a wild guess or an educated guess, I would say that something was going on. I honestly don't believe all this stuff about Hendon Hooker and Jeremy Banks got into it, but I feel like something had to happen. As to what happened, I'm not even going to try to guess, but I'm going to go out on a limb here and say something did. Because why else would Jeremy Banks be suspended for the game? I feel like something is definitely going on in the locker room because earlier today when you're watching this video Monday night, Josh Heupel was asked about it on Monday and he declined to comment. He's not saying anything. He's not confirming if there was an incident and he's not denying it. So by not confirming or denying it, most people, I'd say 95% of them, are going to go, oh yeah, something definitely happened. However, Jeremy Banks on his Instagram posted this, wasn't about no conflict or nothing like that. Get facts, bro, coming back harder than ever. Hmm, interesting to say the least. Here's all I'm going to say about that. Who knows what happened, but seriously, I'm asking you a question. Do you really think it would have mattered if Jeremy Banks would have played or not? I don't think so. <sighs> Man, I, I just don't know. I really don't even have an opinion about it because maybe nothing happened whatsoever. But if I want to say, hey, nothing happened, it's also hard for me to even try to rationalize South Carolina just went out there and whooped your tails. I think fans are wanting an excuse to point to, but maybe, just like I said, South Carolina, they just beat you. All I know is, number one, you ain't going to the playoff. And number two, even with you upsetting Alabama, destroying LSU, and having an awesome season, the way it's ending, it still leaves a terrible taste in your mouth. What happened this season is the best way to describe this Tennessee program. And I knew it. I tweeted it before the game. I'll show you. I tweeted this out Saturday at 11.37 a.m. I said word for word, I got a weird feeling about this Tennessee-South Carolina game. Tennessee is due for their annual letdown game, but at the end, I said balls by 30. I knew it. You see it right there. I tweeted it out. This was the Tennessee annual letdown game. I just, for some reason, thought they wouldn't have a letdown, and they did. I'm almost mad at myself because I should have saw this coming. And Tennessee fans, you knew this was coming. You have this game every single year. As to what's next for this Tennessee program, I have no idea. But I tell you this much, if I was a Tennessee fan, and thankfully I'm not, I wouldn't be feeling too good. And I already know what a bunch of Tennessee fans are about to say. Oh, well, it wasn't for nothing. It was an amazing year, and it's a year we'll never forget. Well, guess what? Your best year in 20 years still winds up ending up in a Chinese New Year ball against Iowa. Think about that. If you're a Tennessee fan and you're saying this is one of the greatest years ever, just think about how sad this is. There's a lot more I can say. This year just ended in the most Tennessee way ever, getting absolutely demolished by Georgia and then doubling that down against South Carolina. I am very curious. Let me know your thoughts down below. But that's right,